Greetings, all. Welcome to Aquarian Diary. I'm your host, John Irving. It is May 31st, 2024. Hi, everyone. It has been a while since I have been on here, and there's good reason for that. I have been going through a completion phase, which has demanded that I spend a lot of time in introspection and self-reflection and kind of cocoon (laughs) a bit because a major cycle is closing for me. And I'm sharing this with you because this may apply to you as well. And sometimes it's helpful to recognize that what we're going through is not specific to us. It helps lend context. I'm not completely out of that phase yet, but I'm pretty deep into it. Actually, I believe the shift has already occurred, but if I was a tarot card, I would be the fool, which is where I'm in a new energy, in a new state of consciousness, in a new place, but I haven't acclimated to these new energies yet. In fact, using my own astrology, I was able to calculate that what I'm experiencing now is the sixth fool card moment of my life or the sixth new major beginning of my life. It may work differently for others, depending on your astrology. And so this is definitely a big (laughs) transition for me. And one of the things about these kinds of transitions or or being in this kind of liminal stage, is that it can be very confusing. And that is because (laughs) in order to shift into a higher state, many of the things that we were associated with in the previous cycle have to come to an end. And that can include anything from work to relationships to friendships to self-identity to topics or fields of interest, we need to kind of go through the tower or the death moment in order to facilitate this shift because you can't take stuff from a lower dimension with you into the higher dimension. Those energies simply cannot exist there. They do not resonate. Yet, of course, because we're familiar with these things and we love them in many cases and we're attached to them and they've been with us for a long time, it can feel very painful to let these things go and we can resist this shift. Many areas of my life came to a complete and grinding halt and it's caused a lot of havoc for me and it's been very challenging. As I've been sitting there going like, what is going on? I feel like I'm being blocked. I feel like I'm being limited. I don't know what to do. And yet, at the same time, I have had a lot of very profound and deep and meaningful spiritual experiences recently in the past month or two. I have a long history of being actively engaged in spirituality, and I have had what I call many peak experiences in my life where I will always treasure those moments, those experiences, those times where I had really profound and deeply moving spiritual experiences that really stand out and are like beacons to me. Those are the kinds of things that keep you going through the hard times because you know that you can connect with the divine and that the divine exists, and that it loves you, (laughs) and that it wants you to evolve, and it wants you to express your full potential. Well, I have had at least three or four of those in the past month or two, which is quite remarkable, because these things don't occur very often. Everybody seeks out these kinds of experiences and desires them, of course, because they're so deeply profound and uplifting but they don't tend to happen all that often. So for these to occur in such rapid succession for me is quite impressive as far as I'm concerned. So what this shows me is that we have this potential now, these energies are shifting, not just for us, but for the whole world. And we can level up and move up into higher levels of consciousness. And what many people don't really understand is that 
when we shift dimensionally, what is true on one dimension isn't true on another. It's a completely different reality. I've talked for a very long time here about things like paradigm shifts. Going back to the earliest episodes that I published, this is a paradigm shift where suddenly everything is different, the past is different, the future is different, the present is different. And when we go through these kinds of shifts, suddenly a lot of things just don't resonate or they don't even belong anymore. And so these shifts can be quite challenging. And even if we have a moment of enlightenment where we just suddenly, everything changes, it still takes time for our lives to change and to reorient themselves and for our relationships to change and our friends. Like, it's a, it's a huge thing. <laughs> In practical terms, you can think of like moving to a completely different city where you don't know anybody. And it's really exciting because it's an amazing city and there's lots to do and lots to explore, but you're totally at ground zero. You don't know where all the great places to go are. You don't, where, you don't know where you're going to meet people that you connect with and all that kind of stuff, right? So there's anticipation and excitement, and at the same time, you're disoriented. Well, that's where I'm at now, and I suspect that many of you are there too. The most important thing I want to convey to you, and this is really important, is that to connect to these higher dimensions of consciousness, we can't take negativity in particular with us. We can't take weighty, heavy things. They just don't belong there. In fact, they will never, they will never <laughs> shift with us into that higher dimension, at least as we understand them, because they literally can't exist there. They're incompatible. And then the other really important thing about this is that when you're in higher states of consciousness, think of it like being illuminated. And what does illumination do? It produces a tremendous amount of contrast with the darkness. So you suddenly see things very clearly and very starkly because the contrast is even more extreme now than it used to be. It's like you had a 30-watt light bulb before, speaking about old-fashioned light bulbs, and now it's 100 watts. And like you see all of the imperfections in the walls, in the floor, in the ceiling. In fact, about a week ago, I was thinking, am I going to have to start wearing like really dark sunglasses? Because I've met psychics who have to do that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating. So when we see things in such stark contrast, it can be a bit disturbing, especially in the beginning. Again, I've met really psychic people who had to be like hermits because they, they would just see everything and it was too much. <laughs> I'm not advocating that for me or for you, but it's just, it's just a concept. So during this liminal or transitional stage, you can kind of bounce back and forth between these two realities, these two dimensions, depending on your state. So in my case, what I found is that now I just look at people or things or articles or stuff on the internet or whatever, and I immediately go into that energy very strongly. It's like, it's like I'm just there. Whether it's a person that's talking or writing or, or a topic even, and um, there's some things I just can't look at now because they're just dark or negative. And then it makes me negative or it'll make me angry. And there's a lot to be angry about, <laughs> really, honestly. But I have to be very careful now about what I expose myself to. Because what happens is that if I expose myself to the wrong things, it'll actually bring my, it'll bring my energy or vibration down. I don't know if that's just a temporary thing or it'll be more permanent yet. We'll see. I mean, I'm still aware of what's going on in the world. I just have to be very careful about what I let myself be exposed to relative to the past. I'm just much more sensitive than I was before. So that's part of this cocooning that I've been doing. On the other hand, there's some really lovely things and people out there that you can entertain yourself with 
you know, whether you're listening to somebody or reading something or whatever, and they have a really lovely energy, and that's wonderful because it'll uplift you. Another aspect of this that I have found is that I'm able to identify dimensions. So some people talk about things, like say, for example, readers. They'll talk about something, and what they're saying is really accurate, but I can identify that it is constrained within a particular dimension of reality. And that if you observed the same thing or, or contemplated the same questions from another dimension, it would have a dramatically different meaning. So again, what's true on one dimension may be true, but on another dimension, it has a completely different meaning or value. So two people can observe or have very similar experiences, but perceive them very differently depending on what dimension you're perceiving it from. And I have talked also about multidimensional reality going way back to the earliest episodes I've published. This is the kind of stuff I've been experiencing. I think this is actually happening on the collective based on what I'm observing. And what it means is that we're going through a huge period of change and and things are shifting very quickly, that many of us are in this transitional phase, which can be quite disturbing, and it can imply that we need to make a lot of changes in our practical lives, relationships, work, where we live, who we associate with. A lot of things could be ending, and a lot of things could be beginning. So a bit of a roller coaster thing going on there. But it has really profound implications because a lot of us may be shifting into a higher state of consciousness, just as I have also been predicting would occur, and I've also been predicting that for a very long time as well. I think some people may have thought I was exaggerating or premature, but I think I'm being proved right. So be aware of this, and if you want to tap into these higher states of consciousness more regularly, I suggest that people be aware of how their energy is shifting depending on what they're doing, who they're around, what they're focused on, and do things that will inspire and uplift and motivate you. That is to be more positive so that you can be lighter. And that could be things like music, art, being in nature, being around other people of a high vibration that you resonate with, spiritual practice, acts of devotion, acts of kindness and compassion, Basically, what uplifts you? Being around water, and yes, showers and bathing or smudging and clearing are very helpful right now because we need to shake off some of the old energies or the old consciousness that we have outgrown. But there's no doubt that this can be a bit of a challenge because, like I said, there's a lot of things that we need to let go of, and some of it can even go into past lives. It seems to me that what is occurring now is unprecedented at least in human history as far as we know it, on a collective level. And to me, that is a really good thing. But just as there are many things that are going to have to change in our personal lives, many things are going to have to change collectively. There's going to be a lot of things that just simply do not resonate with this higher state of consciousness, and they're going to have to either change or be let go of. And that, I think, is going to have profound implications. It may be that there's just like a first wave of us that are going through this, but there will be people that follow in greater numbers. So we might be the tip of the iceberg, but the iceberg is actually quite large. And also, presumably, there will be some kind of event, a critical mass, or something that occurs where everything just suddenly flips over. It's either going to be something like the timeline split I have talked about, or just the weight of momentum is going to carry the collective over into this new reality. And that remains to be seen because that as well is also unprecedented. To be completely honest, I don't see any way of us getting through this on the collective without a significant amount of disruption. I mean, how could there not be? I've always been kind of ahead of the curve. And if other people go through what I've been experiencing at some point, um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of disruption. 
this has been, on the one hand, incredibly difficult and challenging, and on the other, incredibly uplifting and enlightening. But I think that's the point. We have to go through the darkness to get to the light. For more detail, check the episode description for other episodes or articles that are related or that I mentioned. And if you're interested in a reading with me, I'll put a link to that as well. I have a 15% off special on currently. Many sincere thanks to everyone who supports me, especially my YouTube members. Thank you very much. Take care, all the best, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.